Uh, hello, everybody! Hi. Uh, my name is Noel. Um, you can also call me Noel or No Neck. Uh, I have to thank Jolly for giving me a punk rock microphone so that way I can act like a rocker all morning long. Uh, if you are a speaker, you do not have to do this, but if you want to, you can. Um, as you know, or as you may not know, uh, this is a brand new space. Uh, and there are a lot of brand new faces in this room. Uh, and this is a really cool uh, moment in time. Uh, for those of us who have been doing civic hacking in a while, uh, I don't think we've had uh, so many resources at our fingertips. This administration, the previous administration support, and this new administration support, uh, kind of the foundation support that's creating great spaces like this. Uh, teams like the Microsoft Civic Team and Acela Team being in town uh, and helping us uh, kind of like kick off a, really a new century of civic hacking. So uh, before we even get started, I just want to set the tone and say, you're awesome, you're amazing. Uh, get ready for roller coaster. Uh, we're all doing this at the seat of our pants, um, and you are part of a global day of civic hacking. And so there are people around the world that are opening up data sets, they are working to improve their communities and working to improve their government. And so you are not only brothers and sisters in this room, but you're brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, so first, let's give a round of applause to yourselves for being here. Um, for those of you who know me, I can be over-enthusiastic and be a really great cheerleader at times, and sometimes I could be a depressing mop. Um, so I got the cheerleader outfit out this morning. Uh, and with that, um, I, this is really an amazing, I mean, really, I, I don't think anyone really understands how happy I am inside. I think we have one of the greatest community organized teams that's putting on uh, civic hacking events here in New York City. So I want to give them a round of applause for putting all of this shit together. Because I wouldn't have any sanity if it wasn't for them. Uh, and before we proceed any further, and I'll give you a tour of the bathrooms and stuff, um, but I'm going to kick this over to our host, uh, Mika Sifri, who's a longtime friend and co-conspirator of this crazy, crazy space that we're in. And he's gonna give you a little bit of the philosophy and then we're gonna go through all of this. Thank you. So uh, first of all, thank you, Noel, where'd you go? Um, I first just wanna say, uh, what a thrill, welcome to Civic Hall. This is the first time we are standing room only. So I am amazed and thrilled and to see this community here today. And this is exactly the, the kind of spirit and community that we are trying to nurture. Um, and before we go any further, I just want to thank Noel for doing so much of the heavy lifting of building up Beta NYC and being a, an anchor uh, to this whole network. Um, this wouldn't be happening if it weren't for Noel and people like him, so let's give him a big <laughs> it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, so what is Civic Hall? I want to just very quickly welcome you here. This is, uh, I like to say that for 10 years, uh, me and, and my uh, partner Andrew Roche have been working on a startup, uh, and we finally figured out what it should be. Um, so for those of you, how many people here have ever been to Personal Democracy Forum, any of our conferences? So some of you have come. For 10, actually 11 years, since 2004, uh, we started with a small event at the New School with about 200 people who were excited about how technology had the potential to open up politics. Uh, over the years, it has grown to a, a two-day event with 1,000 people every June at NYU. And after 10 years of doing it, Andrew and I said, what do, we, what do we want to be when we grow up? We went out and we asked people like you. We talked to more than 150 people from this whole sector including people around the country from every different branch and discipline, uh, hackers, technologists, activists, philanthropists, people who run hubs, journalists, academics, people in government. And what we heard back was, number one, 
the civic tech community needs a home. We need a place where we can be every day. There are a lot of people who are working quietly, individually, in small teams, in many cases isolated, working from home, working from co-working places where you don't necessarily feel like the people at the next table are, are spiritually aligned with what you're trying to do. This is the hard, meaningful work of actually trying to use technology to make a difference, to improve people's lives, to help fix government, and also to really uh, deal with some of the hard problems our society faces. So they said, we need a home. And we also need a place that can be a regular place where people come and in addition to doing hackathons, there's this ability to connect and work in an ongoing way. So imagine like the, the, uh, the weekly hack nights that you guys do, but being able to do that all the time. That's what this space is designed for. Um, Andrew, I, I should really, I see you just walked in. Do you want to say a few words as well? Sorry. Okay, well Andrew Roche, my partner, uh, also chairman of the New York Tech Meetup, uh, this wouldn't exist if it weren't for his vision, um, his drive, his muscle. Uh, I also want to thank a couple of the key sponsors that helped us set this place up. Uh, Microsoft, number one, and there's some folks here from Microsoft. Raise your hand. They are a very, very important ally uh, to the civic tech, civic hacking world. Uh, so come talk to them. I think they're running a, uh, a session in the back. Um, and as well, Google. Uh, I don't know if there are any folks here from Google. You can raise your hands if you are and also the Omidyar Network. Um, these are three important institutions that are supporting and, and making a place like this possible. Um, last thing I'm gonna say, a lot of you have day jobs, a lot of you uh, do great things, but if you're looking for a place where you can nest yourselves, come talk to us. Take one of these flyers, think about maybe joining, at a minimum, maybe join the community, which is at a very basic level and actually help support our ability to, to stand this whole place up. Um, we do have scholarships available. There is a way to apply for scholarships. If you're a vet, by the way, or married to a vet, we have a special scholarship. We haven't even announced this yet, so you're hearing it now for the first time uh, with the support of Craig Newmark at Craig Connect. So vets in particular uh, who need, who've given so much to our country and need help uh, plugging in, uh, we have a special way for you also to get scholarships here. So. Anyway, have a great day. Uh, Noel's got a lot more to tell you about the program, and uh, Andrew and I and others of our staff will be here. If you're interested in doing an event here, Marissa, would you just raise your hand? Marissa Mlotek is our events director, and she can talk to you about options for events. Anyway, welcome everybody. Let's get going. Thank you, Civic Hall team. Andrew, do you want, do you want to say anything? No? no, no. no? You sure? Yeah. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Andrew and Miha are just kind of tuning into the whole civic hacking thing, uh, these two are our older brothers. Uh, they're kind of like the godfathers of seeing how technology can kind of really integrate and improve people's lives. Uh, and Andrew really, um, though he's being shy now, uh, should really get a big hand of applause for really kind of crafting the support, the, the mayoral support that we have now. Uh, and so he's been able to wrangle kind of the city's tech community. They've been super enthusiastic, uh, but he's been a real big focal point. And I just have to say thank you for all of your hard work, sir. So um, welcome. Um, I, I should also point out that I am a community member here. It's only 10 bucks a month. Uh, it gives you access to all of the fun events that they have, that they're, they're putting on here. Uh, we're hopefully going to start doing hackathons here, or hack nights here, uh, once things kind of settle down, once the, once we kicked in a few of the walls or doors or stuff like that. Um, may call the place our own home. Um, so, um, I want to get to the objectives. <clears throat> Because so many, uh, so we're going to do some kind of setting the stage, kind of uh, managing some expectations, uh, because I think there's so many of you uh, who I've personally never met before, and I, and I know that the questions that you're asking right now are pretty much like, what the hell are we doing today? Um, which is an okay question. I mean, th those are valid things. Uh, I'm surprised that you made it out here and still had the question of, what the heck are we doing today? Um, I'm sure you were like, 
my heater isn't going to be on uh, in my apartment, uh, and I want to build an app for that or figure out how to make an app for that. Uh, and so that's why you came out. But it, this is really fabulous. Um, so uh, how many of you uh, have never been to a Beta NYC event beforehand? Raise your hand. <coughs> Excuse me? Wow. Uh, uh, so, yeah, all right. Uh, so how many of you kind of know what Beta NYC, how many of you don't know what Beta NYC does? Raise your hand. Okay, good, good. So majority of you have done your homework. That's making me happy. Um, for those of you who don't know, Beta NYC, we started off and we kind of were like, we're, we're figuring this all out together. Um, in 2009, we started off as a meetup uh, put on by um, uh, 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 we, <laughs> stumbling my words, not someone, uh, Haley, Haley put it on. Uh, she now is living in Australia, uh, Haley Cooper Ryder. Um, and she, she was working on her PhD program and we had just come out of this really enthusiastic uh, and kind of amazing moment where we had put together this app called Twitter Vote Report, um, which started as a blog post on uh, Tech President or, or Personal Democracy Forum. It was a blog post that went up that said, how do we use Twitter to kind of monitor the elections and provide election protection? Uh, and that fall, as part of her PhD program, she created a meetup account, and in that meetup account, she started this thing called the NYC Open Government Meetup. And people, there were 20 of us that got together, uh, Andrew was one of them, and we started meeting at the very first Newark City, which was down on Varick Street, which is across the street from uh, NYU's uh, 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 tech incubator. Um, and we just started talking about this stuff, and then there was this idea that we should formalize, and we were like, no, 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 let's stay informal, let's stay informal, let's try to figure out where we're going, because we really don't know where any of this is going. We don't want to, you know, have some bylaws and organizations, so let's just play it loose, man. Um, and we did, and we did that for many, many years, and um, in many ways that was helpful for us to kind of explore, and it kind of hurt us in many ways, because we weren't a formal organization, we weren't seen, we weren't recognized, you know, we were just kind of like playing improv in, uh, in, in provisional jazz, man, uh, and we were just jamming, we were just doing things, um, and those things were adding up to some pretty monumental things. We helped start this transparency Transparency Working Group, which is co-chaired by reInvent Albany and Strap Hangers Campaign, and together we joined our older brothers and sisters and educated them on why that we needed to have an open data law that was very, very specific. And we got an open data law passed, right? Uh, and that was back in 2012, and we were jamming, man. Uh, and we helped the Bloomberg administration kind of like walk through these things called hackathons, and we we're helping do it, understand what it was like to be open and have unconference sessions. And we were just jamming, man. Um, and we were just having fun. Uh, and then came a really unique opportunity in 2013. Code for America was kind of blowing out this thing called the Brigades. I got hired on to be a local organizer. And we just kept on jamming. And we started doing these hack nights. And now every single Wednesday, we get together someplace in the city. And we start talking about data as our study hall night. So at those nights, we get together, we talk about projects, we actually we introduce ourselves, we talk about our projects, we talk about the issues, uh, and we kind of do it as a study hall. This is kind of a two-day version of that, uh, with a lot of support, um, with a lot of conversations, uh, some really good food, a lot of coffee, uh, and just kind of hanging out and enjoying ourselves. So the objectives of today are really to carry on what we normally do within our hack nights, um, but we're gonna make them really defined. So our outcomes, slash objectives, uh, are to teach and learn and how to use and, use and interpret NYC's open data. We're gonna make new data and we're gonna create tools and prototypes. Uh, and some of those things to do that is one, we've got data.beta.nyc, hopefully all of you saw that. And I have to thank the team from Ontodia for standing that up. So let's give a shout out to the Ontodia team and the CCAN team for putting that together. And our second tool that we're able to do a lot of communications on that hopefully won't crash uh, was also partially done with Antadia and Vulcan, uh, and Steam Subicocker. Um, so uh, that's in our new discourse uh, place where we're essentially going to migrate all of our conversations. So let's give a shout out to Vulcan uh, for talk.beta.nyc. 
uh, those two tools are where you want to, if you're making data, you put the data there. If you want to talk about some of the conversations and see what other people are doing, go to talk. The third place that you want to go to and where all your projects are going to need to end up by the end of today, or at least put up a project description and get a civic.json file is going to be projects.beta.nyc. And I have to thank Ben and Lucio up here for uh, commandeering that particular project. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. So those are the three resources that you have. Uh, for those of you who got all of my freaking Eventbrite emails uh, and asked to be removed off of the, every single email list that I kept on about adding you to, um, there's also a list of description of other resources that are out there. Um, uh, I'm not supposed to publicly share it, but if you go to the FAQ and you look for developer resources, um, we have some great support from Twilio, from CardoDB, um, uh, who, who else is on that list that I'm forgetting? Uh, Red Hat, um, we actually have someone from Red Hat who's gonna be talking, uh, talking later to uh, get you all on um, OpenShift. And so, as you can see, I'm doing this improvisionally and I'm doing it off the top of my head and I probably should have written all this stuff down. Um, so, what else do we have on the developer resources page? Is that it? I think that's it. If not, go to it. Get it. Um, the challenges that we have are uh, improving real-time notification tools uh, uh, and data. So we have the 301 data set and we have the crash, uh, city's crash data set. Those are two really cool data sets because they have geolocated data. We want to add to those tools. We want to be able to kind of come up with new ideas for real-time notification, just like Notify NYC. So there's a group of people that are gonna be working on Citigram today, uh, citygram.nyc, and we also wanna just look at the data portal and see how we can add more data sets that will provide for real-time notification. We're gonna be creating maps and visualizations. Um, so the challenge is to really just think about how you can put those things together to explain. I heard a really cool project about uh, IP NYC. Was that it? Uh, about trying to map the city's bathroom. So if you're a tourist, uh, you, can, you can come out and a uh, tourist or if you're a New Yorker, uh, you know which is the best bathrooms to go to. So stuff like that, right? It's a, it's a map, it's an app, it's a visualization. Uh, we got a team that's out here that's gonna be scraping the city record. Last year we got two laws passed. Um, one is to put the law online and the second one is to put the city record online. How many of you know what the city record is? Okay. Those are all the people that I know. Um, for those of you who, who I don't know and who don't know the city record, the city record is single-handedly the second or first most valuable data set that the city's gonna have. Uh, and that is, it is all the transactional data. For those of you who are geeks, it's the change log of the city. For those of you who are not geeks, uh, it is uh, all public hearings, all public notices, all court decisions, um, requests for uh, property dispositions, uh, uh, when the city wants to buy something, it has to go into the city record. Everything that the city does goes into the city record. Uh, and for the last century, it has been published on paper. Uh, and we're now getting to the process where we're getting that digitized and we're moving them from PDFs to digital formats. And so there's gonna be a team that's gonna be uh, working on scraping the data that we do have inside of a database. We've got some people from DCAS that are here, but that's the type of thing that we wanna kinda take a challenge at and look at and try to figure out how do we make the city's data more uh, impactful. Uh, there's a gentleman who just started coming to our hack nights, Tim, who, I think, did I get his name right? Please God, I did, hopefully. Um, who has scraped uh, comp stat and uh, fire department uh, uh, statistics data, which has traditionally been only in PDFs. And if you were out last night with Amin, uh, and we had the, the, we were hearing from him about, you know, our, our ask to the city is to tell them what more data we want, right? It's buried out there. So it's our job to kind of prototype what that should look like. And that's kind of another objective that we have. And the last one is using open data science. So uh, the Department of Transportation has this problem where 311 is now so effective that everybody's complaining about every pothole that's out there, which is overwhelming them with pothole requests. Now that's awesome, right? Because we have it on our app and that's kind of, but now they're kind of thinking through how do we, how do we come up with a better solution to all of 
of these different requests. And so um, how do we use data science in general to improve that? I know Jackie Liu, she may not be out here because I think she was at a French Bulldog uh, meetup. She's a neighbor. <laughs> she works for the Parks Department. Uh, they're going to be doing a tree census this year. Uh, and uh, they're, they're going to be asking us to count every single tree. And so one of the sessions that she's going to be doing later on is going to be asking how do we do better data science in regards to our street trees. So those are the freaking challenges that are out there. They're enormous. They're, they're gigantic. They're overwhelming. Um, but we're trying to bring them down a little bit. And that's just a little bit of the sample. So um, what I want you to do is, for those of you who have projects uh, and to uh, challenges that you want to work on, you're going to have one minute to do that type of uh, introduction. So uh, just hold on. So the schedule, how are we going to do this? So uh, at 1 o'clock, which is roughly in about an hour and a half from now, uh, we're going to get to this unconference. And I can now go mobile. You said two, right? This one? This one? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Woo! I'm mobile. Look! Hands free! <laughs> too soon? You guys don't have enough coffee? Uh, too soon. Too soon. Okay. So, uh, this is a really, really sexy board. It comes in two parts. Lauren did this. This is amazing. I'm going to act like Moses. <laughs> break one of the Ten Commandments! <laughs> I'm going to break her artwork. So, uh, so this is the unconference board. Uh, my head is not going to be in the middle of it. Uh, this is Lauren, by the way. Give her a round of applause. So at 1 o'clock, this is how the unconference board is laid out. Um, we've got time slots here. We've got room numbers up at the top. Uh, room numbers, so green, orange, and red um, are the three rooms in the back corner over there. The, they're named after the chair color, okay? Uh, and uh, Turtle Bay, Flat Iron, and Chelsea are the three rooms down this hallway. And they're named after the neighborhoods along 20th Street. Um, we've got the boardroom here, which is in between those uh, chair, uh, uh, conference rooms in the back and the conference rooms in the back. Um, all day long today, there's a subset of you who have registered for this open data workshop. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, those of you who registered for it, uh, though, please be honest. Please be honest with yourselves and be honest with the other people. That room is going to be packed. You should have been getting messages from the organizer. If you didn't register for that, please don't go into that room because that room is already going to be overwhelmed. Uh, we're going to try to host more of those workshops. Um, but for, for that day, for those of you who registered for the Open Data Workshop, you're going to be in the boardroom, which is essentially behind this wall. Otherwise, you have these time slots, which are laterally going for the different hour. Uh, and what you're going to see is that you're going to see these little pieces of paper that have some type of uh, uh, kind of teaser, uh, and then the name of the uh, uh, session holder. So I'm not sure who PA is. And this is a really bad example, uh, not to call you out right now. But whoever PA is, uh, you should put your full name here so that way we know who you are. For example, Joel and Michael are going to be hosting a session in the green room about uh, Crow, the city record online. Tej, who's from Socrata, is going to be hosting an introduction to the city's open data portal. So th this is kind of the schedule. This is going to be filled out in a few minutes by... We can put these down now. Or you can, you can see, buy these little pieces of paper. So when we get to this point, this is something to be thinking about. You're going to take your subject title, and you're going to put it on that piece of paper. And you're going to schedule it. And that board is going to live on the corner, right over there. And that's how we're going to do the unconference. So at 5.30, uh, I guess I can stay mobile, right? Yeah. At 5.30, uh, Gail Brewer is going to be coming by. Uh, unfortunately, one of her friends and one of our civic leaders passed away, this past, uh, passed away this week, and so she's at the memorial service for that during the day. But she is our godmother. She, without her, we wouldn't be here. Well, her and Will Colgrove, who you'll hear from a little bit. Um, but really, it's been her dedication to understanding how we go from open government to open data. And that link between those two worlds is Gail Brewer. And so she's really dedicated to this community. 
Uh, she'll be by at 5.30 to kind of talk more about her enthusiasm for you uh, and the things that we're doing. Um, so please stick around for her at 5.30. At 6 o'clock, when we close down this show, you're going to need to get whatever project that you're working on as a GitHub issue on our projects page. So if you go to github.com forward slash beta NYC and find the projects, I'm going to send out an email so you can't say that you didn't find it. Um, and what we want you to do is we want you to go to our GitHub uh, tracker for our project page and open up an issue queue and uh, send us your project description. Now, as part of that project description, you're going to need to complete a civic.json file. Now, we're going to come up with a few different hacks, and I'm going to work with that project team today to kind of like figure out how to hack the hack the hack that we put together. Uh, but effectively, that's what we're going to want you to do uh, to put those uh, projects descriptions together, and it's going to have to be done by six o'clock. Okay. Or if you just go to projects.beta.nyc, you can find the link to the, the, the GitHub repo. Anything else? OK, great. All right, so we heard from Mika. Now we're going to go to John Paul Farmer. You don't mind that it's Google, right? Here's what you're going to use. OK. All right. Uh, All right, this is an amazing crowd. So good to see you all here today. Uh, so really quickly, we have been working on a project over the recent months, and we're excited that last night we were able to unveil this to the public, and today we're able to invite all of you to work with us, to collaborate with us, not just today, but going forward. So this project is called Athena, and it's a knowledge graph and data visualization about the civic tech community, who's who, what's what, so that we can find one another, so that uh, public officials, can find who's doing what in their community in civic tech, uh, so that a student coming out of college could learn which startups or big companies might be doing civic tech. Um, a nonprofit that wants to fund civic tech can learn about the activities that are happening. So what you see are you see connections among different types of entities. The red ones are governments, the green ones for-profits, the blue nonprofits, the yellow individuals. And different kinds of connections from equity stakes to grants to simple collaborations where no money changes hands to funding others with data. Uh, so this information sometimes exists somewhere on the web, but in an unstructured form. Sometimes it just exists in our heads. So this is an opportunity for all of us to put this together uh, in a database, which then allows anyone to build a visualization on top of it. So what you're seeing is the visualization that we've built so far. We would love your help in improving this visual visualization. Or you can tap into the, uh, the existing read API to uh, learn about, to, to figure out what you could do yourself. We need help, though, building a right API. We need help on a, a variety of features, um, uh, database issues. But we also need help from anyone here who has knowledge or the desire to do research, who wants to help add to the database itself. So it's very easy to add data. Anybody can do it. So we're going to be down this hall all day, today and tomorrow. Please come help. Uh, help us build Athena together. Thanks. Great. Next up is Mark Head from Acela. By the way, I should point out that thank you, Microsoft. Thank you, Acela. You're gold level sponsors of Beta NYC. Uh, you help us keep the lights on. I'm just going to sit here this whole time, just like this. <laughs> yeah! So uh, I uh, don't have anything to show you. I'm not here to sell you anything. Uh, I work for a company called Excella. Uh, it sounds like it's the really fast train, but it's not. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a big enterprise -y software company uh, we sell to governments all over the country and all around the world. That should not excite you. Uh, you wouldn't be here probably if it did. Uh, what should excite you is that my company is investing in ways that we can help our customers release open data and to partner with uh, civic technologists and civic hackers. Uh, the state of New York is a customer. The city of New York is a customer. Speak now, up. I'm sorry? Speak up. Let me start over. I was here. Uh, <laughs> So, Excel is a company. Inside your mouth. <laughs> Why don't you uh, come stand over here? We've got room, we've got room over here. Why don't you come in? Hey, come in from the cold. Is this on? Come in. Ah, really get in there like a punk rocker. You weren't kidding. You no, not at all. So, 
here's the, here's the thing that's exciting. I work for a big, old-fashioned, enterprise software company, and we recognize that the future is open data and collaboration with outside civic technologists. That should excite you. Uh, the city of New York is a customer. The state of New York is a customer. We're working with them uh, to help them collaborate with you all, and hopefully later this year, uh, we'll be ready to bring you some things. Uh, we are a proud supporter of, of Beta NYC. Uh, I am a proud member, proud new member of, of Civic Hall. Um, and I think it's important that we're here today uh, doing this here. So who's, who's, this is your first hackathon, how many? First one you've ever been to, wow, all right. Hopefully not your last one. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, in fact, uh, Noel and I met, I think we met over an, an API at one point uh, when Noel was at it the was New York. Apple API. It was an Apple API. Or uh, Peach. Right. So uh, um, I've been doing this for a while because I'm convinced that this is, this is the way we're going to do it going forward, right? The way that we govern ourselves, the way we interact with those that govern us, and some of those folks will be here today. It's changing. It, it's no longer about government doing it by itself. Um, Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren, said it best, I think. She said, government is what we do together. And that has never been more true than it is today. It's never been possible, as possible as it, as it is right now, for people that don't hold office, that don't hold official station, uh, to make their communities better. The reach that we have uh, just in this room here, just in this space, uh, can cover this entire city. And I think it's important that it happen here in New York. What's happening here is uh, inspiring to other places. Make no, you know, no doubt about it. There are other places in this country and around the world that are watching what's happening in New York and expecting New York to lead. So it's important that there is a healthy Beta NYC, a healthy civic hacking community here in New York. It's very important that there's a space like this one where people can come together and collaborate with each other and partner with each other. It's a place where government can come. It's a place where civic hackers can come. It's a place where vendors like Excel and Microsoft and others can come uh, and collaborate. So, uh, you know, let's not make any bones about how groundbreaking all of this is. Uh, let's 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 understand how important it is. What you're all doing here, uh, and uh, most importantly, um, let's have some fun. Cool. Thanks. Let's come together, right? Right, Beatles? Yeah? Am I dating myself? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so let me get someone who's a little bit older than I am up here. Will Colbro! Woo! Uh, I'm only 27, Noel, so I don't know if I'm older than you. Uh, oh, you're not. All right, that was a dick move. But uh, can everyone hear me? I don't want anyone to yell at me. We good? Yes? Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, my name is Will Colgrove. I work for the Manhattan Borough President, Gail Brewer, who, as Noel said, was supposed to be here talking right now, but will be here later. Um, so I'm going to keep this really quick, brief, because no one, I'm not that interesting. Um, Again, I work for, for Gail Brewer for the Borough President's Office. Do any of you, how many of you knew there was Manhattan Borough President before coming here today? Okay, good, excellent. Um, so the Borough President plays a lot of roles. Again, Gail previously was a council member, was the sponsor of the city's open data law, um, and really the, the message and the, our sort of thought process behind that was government data is your data. It's our data, we should all have it, we should have access to it in meaningful ways. Uh, so. Now we've, really, we've passed this law, we have amazing data up there thanks to, thanks to Nick O'Brien and the people in the mayor's office who really are committed to this, but the question now is what the hell do we do with all this data? Um, so that's why I'm here today is to just learn what all of you are interested in, what data sets should we prioritize, and what can we do with this information? Um, one project that I'm working on, uh, if anyone wants to work with me, is uh, some of you may have heard of the Link NYC uh, project recently, turning all of the city's payphones into Wi-Fi hotspots, gigabit Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, there are over 10,000 payphones in New York City. How many people knew that? Um, believe it or not, there's over 5,000 in Manhattan. And so the question is, where should we place these new gigabit hotspots? Where, where should we prioritize? How can we map out the existing infrastructure that would sort of lend people to gathering around these places? Because we think this can play a small role in bridging the digital divide. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all of you who are out here. It's really, really important for government to know that there's a community of people who care about this stuff. Because again, without a constituency, it's hard to get government to notice. Um, so I just want to say thank you, and please come talk to me if you have any ideas about things government can be doing better or shouldn't be messing around with. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So thank you again. 
Uh, not to out them, but to out them if they want to be outed. Uh, how many government workers do we have in the room today? Just raise your hand. Actually, stand up. Stand up if you want. All right, can we give these people a round of applause for working on the weekend? Thank you. Uh, we ha I can see, I'm not going to out them particularly, but I can see that we've got people from the CTO's office, we've got the people from the Department of Ed, we've got people from the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Oh wait, is that who's coming up here next? It's Nick O'Brien from the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Thanks, Noel. Um, so I'm Nick O'Brien from the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Uh, if you believe that or not. I, I, I had to dress like Noel so, so I would fit in with the, the whole crowd, but he's got great fashion sense. Um, so I want to um, thank everybody who's uh, helped put this together, especially Noel, he's really the linchpin for a lot of this stuff. Uh, Meek and Andrew and um, in this great space they've created. Um, if you haven't heard Andrew's story about uh, the inspiration uh, that uh, really drove this and the uh, community center that his father established uh, in Poland, it's a great story uh, and I think really uh, captures the essence of what people are, are trying to do here. Um, one thing about people's heat being out that, that Noel mentioned that, that may be a, a, you know, a sort of idea, Chris Wong, uh, who I don't know if uh, is here today, actually built an app uh, to measure the temperature in his house, and there is an API for it, and I believe it is, uh, it's on Socrat, I don't know if it's public, but you know, there's a whole bunch of fun stuff that's going on around that. Um, I want to thank John, uh, John Farmer and Athena, and, and one of the things that I think is great about Athena is that it, it starts with people. I've seen a lot of these efforts that start with the data, um, but there are people that use this data, that generate this data, um, and, and that is really how we start to connect it, and, and I think that's a really important design feature of Athena, so we're really excited uh, at the mayor's office to look into that, add to it, and collaborate with it. Um, so as I said, I'm from the mayor's office of data analytics, or uh, MODA. Uh, you may have seen, uh, if you were out last night, uh, Dr. Anurag Mashariki, uh, who is the director of MODA and the city's chief analytics officer. Um, he is uh, you know, really leading the charge in terms of how the city uses data um, and how MODA advances our, our mission. And if you're not familiar with MODA, I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. Our, our mission is simple, and it's to help New York City leverage data to make better decisions. And that takes a lot of different forms. Uh, the first one is uh, we do interagency data projects. So we have a whole bunch of uh, data that was generated for different purposes around the city. And we want to think about it more as a, a citywide enterprise. So something in the Department of Buildings may help the Department of Finance do their job and something uh, over at uh, the uh, fire department may help the police department do their job, and we want to make sure that we're thinking about it as a whole city, not as these silos, because the problems we're trying to solve nowadays are not limited to an agency. They're much more complex, and we want to think about it in that fashion, really as a whole enterprise. Um, we also work to grow analytics capacity at agencies, things that are not uh, individual, uh, that are individual agency problems. We want to make sure that capacity is there, it's robust, it's funded, and they have access to the tools they need. Um, we also are, uh, to an extent, the eyes and ears for the administration. There's a lot of things that come at uh, Mayor de Blasio and his team very quickly, things that are emerging challenges, initiatives that they're trying to, uh, trying to forward, uh, and they need data to make those decisions and make them smart, and they need that quickly, and we serve in that capacity to help bring them that information in a way that they can understand and really use it um, to make better decisions, make data-driven decisions. Uh, and finally, uh, we uh, lead the charge on the open data effort, and that's in partnership uh, with our, our friends over at the Department of Information Technology and communications. Um, so just a little bit about the open data uh, piece. Uh, if, if there are any other things that we do that you're interested in, I'll be around all day. Uh, I want to offer us up as a resource so that um, you know, we can continue this dialogue and, and make sure that those communication channels are open. Uh, but I want to dive a little bit into the city's open data effort. Um, one big resource that uh, I think people, a lot of people will be using throughout the day, um, and Tej and his uh, team at Socrata are going to be helping uh, uh, and promote the understanding and the use of it is uh, New York City's open data portal at nyc.gov slash data. Uh, we have uh, over 1,200 data sets. I think we're only about a dozen shy of, of 1,300, but we, we don't, we don't want to lie on the, on the website. So um, tw over 1,200 data sets, um, and uh, Will and uh, uh, then Council Member Brewer, now Borough President Brewer, uh, were instrumental in getting Local Law 11 uh, stood up, which is New York City's open data law. Um, and that really set the stage for uh, releasing data and, and establishing the open data portal. 
Uh, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Andrew Nicklin, who has uh, started uh, a lot of the New York City open data efforts, and before we even had a law in place and did it, uh, it a lot of voluntary stuff and a lot of policy stuff uh, that wasn't necessarily mandated by the law and made a lot of progress, uh, and also set the stage for the, the technical aspects of, and the playbook that we use uh, to, to further that effort. Um, so a, a few things that we, we try and use uh, the open data portal for. First, it's a discovery layer. So before open data uh, was a law, there was a huge amount of information that the city had already released. Unfortunately, some of it's in PDF form. It's scattered in different applications. So we use the open data portal as a discovery layer to bring things together in one place and, and, and have a single point of access for it. It's also a hosting solution. So there's a huge amount of data that is actually hosted on the site that you can access. Uh, when it's on the site, it automatically generates an API endpoint. Um, so you can automate a lot of the, uh, the data, uh, you can automate a lot of your calls to those data sets. Um, and then also it is a, um, it, uh, we can create lightweight apps off of it. So instead of these big enterprise development things, I gotta go get a vendor, I gotta make this, uh, the data being there and the visualization tools and the embed tools that exist there allow us to very quickly make things, uh, save money for the city and really be a resource instead of reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the strategy uh, that we're employing in terms of rolling out open data. So uh, when the law was passed, uh, there were, we have to get all the, open, all the public data sets that New York City maintains on the portal by the end of 2018. Uh, it's a huge effort and we've been really running on a, you know, it feels like a treadmill to comply and, and get those open data sets up there uh, very quickly. And unfortunately, what that results in is some posting of static data sets. So we'll throw the 2013, the 2014 data set up there, and it gets stale very quickly. And as this uh, great community has developed, we're getting a much better understanding of the users and what they need, uh, what you guys need, to make this stuff valuable. So we're really focusing on uh, improving the quality um, and uh, not going quite as broad, but going much deeper on data sets, making that understanding, that quality, making sure that you can rely on the data, make sure it's there. Um, that's really our focus now that we feel like we have our hands around uh, the compliance to a certain extent. Um, and, when, and the last thing we, we want to do in the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics is figure out how we can use uh, the insight and the skills and the knowledge you have in terms of developing a user interfaces, in terms of um, if you already have a user base, how do we get city information via your interface to them? The city doesn't always want to start from scratch to build these things, and I think there's a lot of collaborations and partnerships that we can stand up to um, to further that effort. So you know, not only pushing stuff out to you so you can use it, but how do we take that insight and bring it back and drive decisions in the city. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. So I'm looking forward to what comes out of uh, all your work today. I'll be around all day. And uh, feel free to come up to me, ask any questions, and uh, check out our website at nyc.gov analytics or follow us at, at NYC analytics. Um, or you can follow me at, at NJ O'Brien. And uh, turn it back to Noel. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Oh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. this one stop working? I don't know. No. Hey. Hi. One, two. One, two. Great. Okay. Don't need to hold it so close. Okay. 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 We'll, we'll figure this out. All right. Um, just um, a, a few extra words. Um, so one, thank you to the Internet Society uh, of New York and the Internet Society from D.C. They are the two that are right here in front of you that are live streaming this. Uh, so everyone on the Internet, hello. Hi, uh, and we're going to have Jolly say uh, a few words about that. How many people here have heard of the Internet Society? I! <laughs> See, and that's amazing. How many of you use the Internet? <laughs> you know, so how come you don't know about the Internet Society? Because the Internet Society, you know, basically, you know, if it wasn't for the, internet, the people that started the Internet Society, there would be no Internet. Vince Cerf and Bob Kahn, they made the IP TCP protocol, you know, and then they, they, and they worked with John Postel, who did the DNS system, and they made, they made the internet. And around um, 1992, they, you know, they had, they, you know, they had the IETF, which was the Internet Engineering Task Force that was making the protocols. They needed some kind of, you know, and they were having conferences, they needed to organize those conferences. It was just jams like this. So they, you know, they, they started the Internet Society to, like, handle that, 
And the Internet Society still handles that. And uh, it runs the Internet Architecture Board. It still runs the, the IETF that run, makes the protocols. And it still works on developing the Internet around the world. And it also works at a very high level of policy to keep, keep it open and, uh, and all, these, all this good stuff. And it also has 100 chapters around the world. And we're just one chapter in New York. And one of the things we do is we do the webcasting, a lot of webcasting from New York, as some of you may have seen. And the reason for that is that the stuff that, the stuff that Noel is doing and this kind of stuff is an example to the rest of the world of what can be done. And that's why we love to webcast it so that people around the world can see what's happening in New York. So, you know, we love what you do. And if you go to internetsociety.org, you can join us and it's free. So we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Jolly. Uh, yeah, the pins, uh, the Beta NYC pins that you're wearing are made from Jolly's two hands. Uh, Jolly is an infamous punk rock button legend and promoter legend, and it's a great to have him here as part of Beta NYC, and it's great to have him as one of the vice presidents for the Internet Society. Uh, I don't think we would be as far as we are today without Jolly, so uh, thank you, Jolly. You really do mean a lot to us, so thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to do something that you probably think is impossible. Uh, the first one is, please don't use the bathroom for the next 30 minutes. I'm not joking. Uh, apparently the super just notified us that the uh, water for the building is shut off for 30 minutes uh, to do an emergency construction with the sewer. So if it's not for the internet, it's now the water. The two most important things in a nerd's life, right? <laughs> Uh, those basic utilities. So uh, hold it for 30 minutes. Um, the well, see, the thing is that all those coffee shops, Toby's is also affected. Um, so uh, if the there's a Starbucks around the corner, there's a teaspoon further down around the corner. Um, but if you can just hold it for 30 minutes, please do so. <laughs> We're sorry. Uh, and the next thing is that should you need to go to the bathroom in 30 minutes, uh, down this hallway is where you'll find the restroom. Uh, also down this hallway on the other side of Civic Hall is where you're going to find the Bola Hackathon uh, uh, data jam, which we're going to talk about. Where, where are you, Steve? Over here. Oh, okay. We're going to be talking about that very shortly. Um, but uh, we're, when we get to the projects, but that's what you'll also find. I'm just doing a little bit of the lay of the land setting. You have the cafe uh, where you got your coffee and your orange juice. Uh, you know where the unconference rooms are. Pretty much this space is ours to play around with for, uh, for the day. Uh, please don't destroy it. It's brand new. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is to have Andrew and Mika really pissed off at us for uh, kicking the tires too hard. Um, so now the one of the most magical, uh, impressive, if not uh, unbelievable abilities of a non-conference is to introduce every single person where they get to say their name and three words of why they're here. So uh, I'm going to be walking around this space, so make sure that there's a, a little bit of a foot traffic so that way I don't step on any ankles. Um, and uh, yeah, so Noel Hidalgo, data for all. You got that? That's how it's done. We're going to go around and we're going to do this to everybody. So you ready? Sorry, what? Are you ready? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm a little deaf. What? Yeah. Uh, wait, one more time. It's a Saturday morning. Leave us alone. <laughs> then why are you here? What? All right. So what? I'm sorry. What would you say? Yes. Yeah, uh, Frank DiMuzio, Red Hat, Open Source, Open Shift. That's four. <laughs> <laughs> That's f oh, okay. Adrian, uh, Socrata API resource. Dave Shigatari, Socrata, uh, iHeart Data. You got to stand up if you can. Uh, Lauren Renee, Urban Planner Extraordinaire. <laughs> Lucio Tolentino, Make Government Better. 
Micha Sifri, yes, we can. <laughs> Michael Wien, public meetings for all. Walken Civic Hacker. You have to stand up. Come on, people. Nick O'Brien, Hack the Bureaucracy. Will Colgrove, Better Government Service. Kara Chessel, Open Data Education. Alina Ladone, Learning Free Coffee. Yambo Day, New York Social Street Connector. Paul Schreiber's Safe Streets Today. Steve Adler, IBM. <laughs> Wendy Glavin, LiveCode.com slash NYC. Verona Ford, back on for your back office. Uh, Adam Becker, Better Technology for Government. Uh, Todd Favacher, LiveCode.com, anyone can code. Zenobia Earl, data is great. Irene, student, uh, reducing the digital divide. Jackie Liu, um, I make maps. <laughs> she makes trees. Biggie Mayer, iOS developer, homeless. Lucian Khan, all the code. Avi Fox Rosen, arts, culture, data. Star Child, uh, urban designer extraordinary. So you got to stand up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Roy, uh, discover. See, stand up, stand up, stand up. Okay, there we go. Discovering health APIs. <laughs> Hillary Barr, mental health technology. Henry Bowman, build better APIs. Charles Chowalko, urban uh, researcher member. Matthew Alhante, data driven virtue. <laughs> uh, Julia Martin, what are we saying? That's three <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> Elena Rabino, a data biz designer. Jocelyn Philippe, uh, data bicycles infrastructure. Nathan Story, teach, learn, mapping. Madhu, data analytics rocks. Jackson Lee, uh, make API better. Uh, Julian Singh, improving government. You gotta stand up, stand up, stand up. I already won. Oh, sorry. You stand up. Uh, Luis, I like internets. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Destry Sibley, Learning Data Viz. Great. Alicia McWilliams, curious about NYC. Lee Hatchadorian, Geotech Free City. Thank you. Ben Typen, Building Affordable Housing. Allison Abreu Garcia, here to learn. Sarah Zeller Berkman, Youth Participation Data Policy. Guilherme de Almeida, Open Government Toolkit. Um, James O'Toole, Defending Public Goods. All right, where are we going now? Mark right. Hansen, uh, Useful City Websites. SRA, uh, Data Science Volunteer. Nam, more data, please. Joe Eastman, Mayor's Budget Office. Miranda Neubau, a Government Technology Journalist. Great. Jocelyn, Data for Decision Making. Megan Lazier, Accessoride. Brandon Friedley, listening, discussing, and mapping. Rebecca Altlu, developer in training. Catherine Hurley, intelligent recycling data. Oh, sorry. Uh, Nick Kaufman, uh, space and time and everyday life. Excellent. Simon McCarthy, here to suck on everybody's brain. <laughs> Run, uh, mapping for better transportation. Dennis Tan, sustainability data visualization. Chris Henrik, amirentstabilized.com. Charlene Dugo, Map Technology, Organized Data. Dina Patel, uh, Data is Fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter, Physicist, Hacker. <coughs> Craig Williston, MITM, Photographer. Alice, um, Learning Data Visualization. <laughs> okay. Uh, Danielle Carrick, uh, Creating Data Visualizations. Linda Ortega, Student, Hack Government. Amal Abid, uh, Policy Education. Great. Right. Oh, no. Let's get started. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Uh, Dan Devine, Save Nassau's Trees. Montse Belver, Editor Here Level. Sean Adams, Cool Data Stuff. <laughs> Nessa Ryan, Public Health Student, Ebola Jam. Ed Narkin, JavaScript for the win. Jonathan Marable, make a difference. Samantha Beach, visualize relatable data. Great. 
Maya Brook, new New Yorker. Excited. Excellent. All right, who did I get here? here? Did I get both of you? Walker Flynn, general interest. Great. Kevin Diaz, learn and develop. Great. Emil Christensen, web scraping. Christopher Tull, peace through cooperation. Josh Addington, uh, map data viz. Uh, Coach Canal, super duper exciting. Uh, Dirk Kelly, Citigram needs data. I got you. All right. So. Gary Reynolds, maps, map policy. Map. Say that again. Maps, maps policy. Sorry. John K. Mass Transit data. Sonia Reynolds, issue advocacy. Ron Breyer, consultant. William Wong, healthcare data. Can you hear them? Can you still hear them? Yes. No. Okay. Veronica Addis, NYU School of Medicine. Allison Hodgson, irreverent city employee. <laughs> Eric Brelsford, Mapping Bike Lanes. <clears throat> Ross Keith, doing cool stuff. Cool. Can you still hear them? Can, can someone, uh, Jolly, can... Yes. Okay, can you turn up that volume? The, the wireless mic, the handheld that you gave me? All right, let's go, keep on going over here. Jason Ivan, Data and Education. Sam Price, JavaScript all day. Great. All right, for those of you who are sitting on the floor, I'm going to need you to stand up. Yuis Kanet, Data Driven Innovation. Meredith McCarran, uh, Learning Data Science. Jacob Velasco, Developer in Child Welfare. Matt McVeigh, Open Data Journalism. Natalie Pantoa, Data, Data, Data. <laughs> Ryan Hanohan, Active Data Citizen. Yoni Lev, Text Analytics. Andrea Grykowski, Here to Learn. Adi Sevi, help us build Athena. Great. All right. Do we, who, yeah, uh, okay. John Shea, Data Maps APIs. Sabrina, happy to be here. Right. Ama Birch, uh, uh, Database Action. Tony Ledig, MTA Bus Time. Uh, Rushid, uh, MT Open Source Mobile Apps. Sing Hui Huang, make things in vision. Saturday Forbes, maps and visualizations. Kevin Velardez, search and advocate. Salima Speller, techie, chic, vagabonding. Uh, Gunner, local government, transparency. Mayor Snyder, emergency services data. Alex Amudio, learning new tricks. Matthew Melody, affordable housing architect. Yeah. Nina Aaron, uh, data into information. Frank Pudding, working with real trees. Say that one more time. Working with real trees. Working with, working with real tree. trees. Great. Uh, yeah. Aaron Plantinga, contribute some code. Uh, Charlie Ferrari, better cities through data. Great. Helena Lilly, connecting workforce initiatives. Catherine Hoffman, Development Economics and Data. The People Eng Sorry. The People Engineer. Data unlocks potential. Uh, Alex, some kind uh, research and development at the Capital Group. Ziggy Mintz, Mapping Housing Data. Patrick Atwater, new from California. <laughs> Dominic Morrow, Open Data Advocacy. Sanford Guerrero, build better APIs. Adam, learn about maps. Akil, hack the government. Timothy McDermott, data liberator. Keith Van Emmeler, uh, development fellow at the Flatiron School. Hamari Takase, le student learning DV. Raven Chu, uh, making New York City better. Hong Bin, sharing useful maps. Brigitte Jelinek, programming all the things. Chris Sira, here to help. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Ryan Malecki, uh, excited we can do gooder. Taylor Kuhn, open data design. Gwen, and I am overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> David Ader, NYC is my home. 
Ron's uh, social apartment hunting. Oh, so many people! Jessica Peck, Make Better Science. Dennis Clark, Natural Language Processing. Yulia, Learning About Open Data. Mark Head, thank you all. Uh, Mario Morales, American Statistics Association. Reshma Sheikh, Python Data Science. Steve Correa, Open Environmental Data. Fatima Khalid, help us build Athena. Jolly McPhee, uh, fast, ubiquitous internet. Sarah Mukhtar, uh, unemployed designer planner. <laughs> Fanny Chang, New York City Housing Info. Claudine, creating a database to benefit the Rwandan orphans, and also I'm looking for computers. I need a hundred computers from you guys. <laughs> John Paul Farmer, Civic Tech Impact. Matt Stempeck, Collective Knowledge Sharing. Ken Chen, Microsoft, Building Athena. Joanna Altman-Smith, Visualization Saves Lives. Carol Crump, Voters, Bikes, Trees. Peter Berkey, Data for Brick and Mortars. Uh, Quan, uh, Building Data Sets. Great, all right, who did I miss? I see some hands, you gotta raise those hands high and I'm sorry, some of the faces are, wait, huh? Huh, who did I get? I know you didn't, say, I didn't put this microphone in your mouth. <laughs> Mark, Mark Shifflett, Web Data Design and Development. Okay. Everybody, everybody, everybody? Is that everybody? Yeah, 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 this guy. Hi, I'm Ruthie. Uh, I'm a developer. I do some design stuff too, and I work at a startup that helps small business owners get financing. Three words. Three. What? what? It's just supposed to be three words. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ruthie, hi, how are you? <laughs> okay. All right, who did I miss? Who did I miss? Aha. Uh, Forest Pan, work in progress. Work in progress. <laughs> All right, who did I miss? Raise your hand. Oh, sorry. Sorry, there's like a whole pot over here. <laughs> Holy moly. Where, where are you again? Just, just, huh? Right, right, uh, Oh. Sorry, uh, cities, climate change, Eric asked. Gotcha. Jonathan Brooklyn Borough Hall. Okay, wow, okay, sorry guys. You guys were there the entire time. All right, give yourself a round of applause. Um, now, I know that we had a, thank you, thank you. Um, so while we had a bunch of dudes who did the introduction, um, and I, you know, hopefully the, our leadership continuously is perpetually getting more diverse, uh, this audience is freaking amazing. So many people. So many pigments of skin, so many genders, it's epic! Um, I want you to understand that, that uh, this is a really beautiful day. Uh, it's, uh, somebody wants to interrupt us. Um, it's a really beautiful day. Uh, so a lot of beautiful minds that are out there. I want you to understand that we're all here as brothers and sisters, and we should all be treating each other with the utmost respect, not only for ourselves, but for our ideas. Uh, this is a core part of our uh, relationship, not only with each other, but with government. This is a safe space for everybody, and looking at everybody, I'm so happy to have so many of you here. So, uh, if you have any issues, if you have any problems about anything at all, I want you to come find one of the people that has one of the white uh, B buttons. These are our hospitality pins. These are the people who have been trained to deal with certain types of situations should things get crazy. But looking at all of you, I hope that that's not going to be the case. Um, but we're here to help. Uh, we're here to solve any problem and direct you to the types of resources that you need uh, and more or less address any issue that is going to happen over the next two days. So uh, don't be a stranger to the people with white buttons. Uh, we're here to make sure that this event goes smoothly. Um, with that, are there any other questions? Okay, good, perfect. That's how I like events to go on. So this, we now move on to, what time is it? Um, 12, okay. So we're actually progressing pretty quickly here. I'm gonna get rid of this other microphone. Um, and hopefully not deafen all of you. Okay, great. So 
Uh, how many of you have been to an unconference before? Ooh. Uh, so, how many of you were here for the board description? Come on, okay, see, how many of you are still awake? Yeah. Only half the room's still awake. Okay, so, huh? Saturday morning. And you're here. Why are you complaining? But how'd you get here? This is safe space. You're lucky. Uh, uh, so, uh, once again, Lauren, the creator of the board! Okay, for those of you who are sitting over there, we, we, no, you can stay facing that way, stay facing that way. We'll, we'll just, we'll be like sandwich people. We'll put our backs together and then just rotate. All right, to the right, to the right, your left, left, to the right. Oh, to the right, yeah, when you go to the right, I go to the right. When you go to the right, I go to the right, right? Okay, so this is the board. Great. Um, so for those of you who are over here, the time slots are on the left-hand side. They're only on one of the boards. The other board is blank, but we're going to put them two together, so the time slots are just going to go right across. Um, we've got the rooms that are up here. So we've got the green room, orange room, and red room. Those are determined by the seat colors. There are also signs over there. And then on the other board, we've got the board room, Turtle Bay, uh, Flatiron, and Chelsea, which are in the back area. So, unconference sessions. The way that unconference works is that there are three laws. What are the three laws? A robot may not harm a human or through an action cause a human. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are three laws, and there is a zero. Uh, Do you know zero? Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, that uh, a robot cannot uh, uh, cause the human race as a whole uh, any harm, or through an action cause uh, uh, the human race to come to harm as a whole. He might be a robot. <laughs> um, so the, the three laws are essentially uh, uh, unconference three laws. Anybody who's there is, is supposed to be there. Uh, if they're not there, they're not there. Uh, the second law is uh, everything that happens in the room is supposed to stay in the room. So uh, you know, don't take it out of the room. No fist fights outside of the room. I don't know why that one's there as part of the three laws. It never made any sense. Um, but essentially the code is like, you know, try to wrap things up in 45 minutes. That's the best way to describe it. These sessions are going to be 45 minutes long. And then the third one is, is uh, um, uh, the law of two feet, which is effectively, um, if you feel that you're in the session and it just doesn't make any sense for you, like if it's the technical topic is too high uh, or if it's too low, uh, feel free to walk out. Don't be offended um, if, 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 like, you're just like, oh, well, this kind of doesn't make any sense for me to be here. I don't get it. Um, so it's 45 minutes. Uh, the other 15 minutes is supposed for, for you to, it's actually just kind of a buffer to wrap the F up um, uh, because we know that people like to talk. Um, so um, we really have uh, six rooms to have conversations. We've already got some of them up here. I see someone did an introduction to CityGram and didn't put their name on it. So that's bad form. Uh, who's PA, by the way? Well, that's me. I wrote the rules, I guess. Huh? That's me. Okay, what's your last name? Atwater. A-T. <laughs> 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 I've never done this before. Okay. How do you spell water? W-A-T. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you try standing up in front of 300 people and see what happens to your spelling. All right, so Dirk is finishing up. I didn't realize. I didn't, like, read anything about that. Oh, you didn't read the other cards that were up yeah, here? Yeah, just, you know, situational awareness. Oh, right. So you didn't look at the other cards. No, I didn't. Okay. All right. And then Tim, you're going to be, what's your last name, Tim? Uh, M-C-D-E-R-M-O-T-T. M-C... No worries. Okay, so I think everybody just be, was able to determine how to do this. Um, so we've got cards that are up here. Uh, orange, pink, yellow, and green. Uh, choose your poison. We've got some tape and we've got some Sharpies. So if you have a subject that you want to discuss, it doesn't even, you don't have to, you, you, you just have to kind of say that you're going to facilitate this conversation, right? Uh, it could be about a project that you're working on. It could be an idea, something that you that you you have that you a challenge 
that you're trying to fix, uh, you're going to grab one of these pieces of paper and you're going to stick it up here, right? Uh, and you're more or less going to you're going to represent. We're going to start off with Steve Adler because he actually has a whole part of this building kind of dedicated to some of the projects uh, that's revolving around Ebola. So why don't I give you an opportunity to just get up here uh, and, and talk about that. And then for those of you who are interested, or uh, we have some of these people who've already put their names down sitting up here. For those of you who have an unconference session, I'm going to try to freaking, yeah, we are. But I wanted to get the people who are doing unconference sessions to kind of come up here um, and, and pitch their sessions. Yeah, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to make people who are going to do unconference sessions line up in this thoroughfare right here where there's empty space where only our photographers and the man people is standing. So if you're going to do an unconference session, come stand in, in this kind of like this empty uh, uh, and you're going, to, you're going to have one minute to pitch your session. Uh, and while we're doing that, uh, we have Steve Adler uh, going to talk about the Ebola hackathon. Yeah. Okay, good question. So um, green, orange, and red have projectors. Uh, Turtle Bay, Flatiron, Chelsea don't. Uh, and they're roughly uh, around 10 to 15 people that can squeeze in each one of them. Um, Turtle Bay, Flatiron, and Chelsea do not have whiteboards, but we can move whiteboards to accommodate the fact that they don't have projectors. So uh, any other questions about the rooms? No? No? Okay, great. Steve. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Steve Adler. I work for IBM. And what we're doing next door is we are working with the governments of, Le of Sierra Leone and Liberia <coughs> to create open data portals for these countries. We are documenting all of their healthcare facilities in these countries. We are collecting detailed information about these facilities that these countries themselves don't have. We are correlating that to population densities, to the Ebola outbreak in both countries, and we're trying to collect a comprehensive repository about their healthcare capabilities to help themselves and to help international aid workers who are trying to eliminate this outbreak. We have a huge room, we have video monitors, we have whiteboards, we have food, and we would love to have your help. Thank you. All right, um, so we have some people who have uh, pre-packaged uh, their uh, presentation. So I'm going to have you come up to the microphone. We're going to move the microphone so that way you can see exactly where you are in time, beyond where you are right now in time. <laughs> uh, OK, so we have Frank from uh, Red Hat. All right. So hi, Frank from Red Hat. I'm doing a talk at 2 o'clock on OpenShift. A platform as a service. So come check it out if you're interested in open source software, hosting, and bathrooms that are working. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Hi, uh, Tesh Chigateri with Sakrata. I have a session at uh, 1 o'clock at the Orange Room. Uh, and uh, why is it? Why is it with the green sticker? Are we in the different colors? What? No. The orange room. Uh, you're in the orange room, right? Okay. But with green. Yeah, orange room with the green sticker. Uh, <laughs> come learn about uh, New York City's open data portal, where you're going to find uh, all your data from the city, uh, all the juice that you want to work on this weekend. So uh, come check it out, and also learn more about some APIs uh, for the data sets. Thanks. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Adrian. I also work at Socrata. I'm a developer over there. And um, we're doing actually two sessions. I'm going to do another one where it's focused on doing a deep dive into the Socrata APIs. Um, so if you want to learn about how to hack on the uh, 311 data set, all the other you know, data sets on the open data portal, come check it out. Um, join the conversation, come with the questions. And yeah, it's called, it's at 3 p.m. today called uh, Chug and Soda, so if you're thirsty for, for APIs, come on up. Hey, I'm uh, John Krauss, I'm with the Gulf Lab at NYU. Um, I'm gonna be doing a session about uh, how to grab large civic data sets, uh, in particular, 
the New York City real estate data set that goes back to 1966 is pretty amazing. Um, we have, we're developing with the GovLab a couple tools to make this easier because the open data portals uh, don't necessarily serve out uh, large CSVs very quickly. Those tools are called Docker for Data and Open Data Cache. Um, so I'm gonna go over that. And if you're interested in playing around with some really big New York City data sets, I can uh, guide you through that process. Thanks. What slot? What slot? I haven't chosen a slot yet, actually. So I guess I'll do two o'clock at Flatiron, because I don't need a projector. Yeah, two o'clock at Flatiron. Oh, somebody doesn't have, huh? No, t use the tape, use the tape. Um, uh, did you put your name on there? Oh, no, I didn't. Hi, my name is uh, Todd Fabacher. I'm from LiveCode.com. Uh, we looks like we're going to be at, we're going to try at 2 o'clock in the green room, which is a small room. And so we're basically, everyone can create an app. Uh, and live code is basically, you know, a lot of guys here are programmers, but a lot of people are not. It's a very easy um, cross-platform development tool that you can actually mine the data, and it's a, a system where you can actually learn to code within uh, within a few weeks. It's a really simple API that basically allows you to, to access the data. If you ever wanted to learn how to code or get access to it, it's livecode.com, and I'll be in the uh, green room at 2 o'clock. Hello. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, normally, I represent Commune. Today, I'll be representing Beta NYC and the effort to unleash the great data set, which is uh, Crow, uh, so the city record. Uh, so we'll be in the green room, uh, the green room at one o'clock. So the first session, and uh, we'll be looking a little bit about the history and the background of this uh, future data sets and what we will be doing today to unleash and uh, basically parse the database that we have available. So please come, we're looking for everyone, and especially the ones that said they were uh, here to help. So please come, thank you. I should note that um, because people's coming up here, uh, the five o'clock sessions are gonna be 30 minutes, so they're gonna go from five to 5.30 so that way we can have Gail. So for anyone who's gonna put their stuff at five, uh, five o'clock, you're all gonna do a 30 minute session. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See, this is our most energetic person, so we gotta get to his level at some point. That's why my session's at five o'clock today. So how many people here have something against bureaucracy? Okay, a good number of you. So this session is actually dedicated to you because all of you, that are, all of you are data scientists and you have the unique power to shatter bureaucracy that no one else does. So this is gonna be a brainstorming discussion on breaking bureaucracy, how? Five o'clock. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Tim McDermott. I'm uh, recently retired uh, from the corporate world and uh, looking to give back uh, to the community. I will give, be giving a presentation at 5 o'clock today in the green room about my efforts. Uh, we're scraping the CompStat and the FDNY uh, ambulance and um, fire data. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Dirk Kelly. I'm the one that didn't put my name on the board earlier. Um, so three o'clock in the red room, I've just taken over a project called Citigram, which is basically meant to be an endpoint for all of this great data. We want to get the word out to people through SMS and email notifications about what's out there. And we'd like to work with actually the rest of America to bring our code base back in line with what they're doing. So if you're interested in data or software, it's a Ruby project and I'll be showing you how it's done and what we're looking to get help with. Um, otherwise, I'll be in the Northeast corner hacking on that all day. Cheers. Hello everyone, again, uh, my name is Patrick. I'm the dude from California who apparently breaks the rules. Um, I was doing a little session on CAFRS, which is a very arcane municipal finance document that every city in the country publishes. It has not been unlocked, it's open. It's really important, it's a little dull, but it'll be kind of a quick win. And just talking about that, doing that, and talking about how to get government doing digital by right and all this kind of cool stuff just within government by default. Uh, so 2 p.m. in the orange room, which is back there, and it's orange for all. Hi everyone, my name is Faggy Mayer and I'm an iOS developer and I would like to talk about homelessness. I don't have a spot though, is that okay? Huh? I don't have a spot. Well, you just put it down, you put your name, say you want to talk about homeless apps and then you put your name on it and then we'll uh, put you on the board. Okay, five o'clock, can I ask? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you gotta write it down. Now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
Carmen. And then your name. Yep. Sorry about that. So I just want to talk about things like um, Matt Stempeg told me about Hand Up, which is uh, an, an app that uh, you can raise money for uh, for specific homeless people and for their needs. There is also the Android. Uh, yesterday, Noel told me about the Android version of the app for uh, homeless assistance. Uh, I just want to brainstorm and see what we can do for the homeless to make their lives a little easier. Thank you. Cool. Hello, everyone. I'm Jia. I'm the technologist for CUNY Journalism School. Um, my session is mostly is going to be on discussing how you learn and build best, and it's going to take place at a farmer's market. Um, not in this building. So if you are interested, meet me here around 1 o'clock. We'll talk about forms of learning in terms of in hackathons or conferences um, or just peer learning meetups and whatnot. Uh, I would love to get developers in the group so we can talk about when, what's the most efficient way to actually collaborate coders, non-coders, data people, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, entrance at 1 o'clock. Great. I'll just say the time later. Uh, my name is Nick Coffin. I'm a storyteller, editor, translator. I work with uh, Code from Maine, and I also work with a collective, uh, an urban urbanology collective called the Herbs that is based in India and worldwide. And uh, we're interested in building new platforms for storytelling that make use of all kinds of data, geospatial data, and basically make it possible for people to produce hyper-local, qualitative stories about places that can be put into some sort of archive. And um, I'm interested in any other storytellers that are here, if you want to do the session together and talk about some of the stuff, radio, images, audio, everything, like, uh, yeah. So, uh, come find me. I don't know what time I'm going to do it yet. Everyone, my name is Tony. I work at the MTA on MTA Bus Time. We're working on an app, um, very close to releasing it. Uh, it will be open. It will be nifty. It runs in Ionic and Angular. If you're familiar with those, uh, interested in your feedback, interested in any comments you may have. So, uh, once we figure out where we are, I'll let you know. Thank you. Wow, the MTA using Angular. I never thought I'd see today. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. My name's Adam. Uh, my session is sensitively called uh, Selling Your Civic Hack, or maybe Institutionalizing Your Civic Hack, although I don't know if I like that connotation. Uh, but the background is that uh, I started a company that sells software to government, uh, still very young. There's about six people. And we're just kind of getting to the point where government is starting to adopt our software. Um, so I kind of just want to host a brainstorm, share out. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions for all of you. If you um, have done civic hacking in the past and tried to get your software into government and tried to sell it. Um, and I'd love to also get advice from anyone out there that has experience with this. Um, so I'll put it on. If you want to come, let's chat. Where or what? I don't know. It'll be on the board and it'll, be, it'll say uh, selling your civic hack. How about that? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Turtle Bay, 1 o'clock. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm short. <laughs> um, I'm a, my name is Adi, I'm a civic tech fellow at Microsoft. I wanna invite you to help us build Athena, which is a data visualization project of all of the civic tech community. Basically, you should all list yourself in there because you're all involved. Uh, we are looking for mapping people, API people, anyone who's doing D3, Node.js, and we are also looking for non-technical people. So if you are non-technical and you are looking to contribute, uh, you should join us. We're going to be in Chelsea room uh, all day today and tomorrow. So join us. Hi, I'm Megan Lazier, and my session is going to be data and design for disability. So I'm really interested in trying to open up data sets that are on Accessoride. Which, are, which is a system for how basically disabled commuters get around New York. And right now, regular able-bodied commuters have access to the API and access to data, and citizen technologists can build tools for regular commuters. But disabled commuters, 
there's no tools that we can build for them because the data is locked. And so I'm really interested in strategizing about how we can change that as a community. Uh, my sign-up sheet is pink. The time will be on the board. And again, I'm Megan Lazier. Come find me. Thanks. Hi, I'm Eric Ast. I do research for an organization called C40. Um, we help cities all around the world, including New York City, share information to fight climate change, uh, reduce carbon emissions, and adapt better. So I want to invite everybody um, to talk a little bit about what open data exists in this effort currently, um, and how we can use supplementary data sets that are out there being generated um, that aren't quite in the purview right now um, to help in this, uh, in this work. So it's like um, I'll grab a 5 o'clock at Flatiron. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I'm a cartographer and I help run map time. But I'm here working on some data around rent stabilization. Um, as we all know, New York City is becoming an increasingly unaffordable place to live. Um, we're really losing a lot of affordable uh, apartments and the rent stabilization laws are being weakened, et cetera. So I have a couple of projects I'm working on. One is called mirentstabilized.com. And it's meant to be a web app where people can check to see if their building might be rent stabilized and how to request a rent history and file a complaint with HCR. And another is trying to scrape some data from the Department of Finance tax documents, which actually list uh, rent stabilization unit counts um, and other data. So if anyone is interested in talking about those things or wants to use or test the prototype of the app and just give me some feedback, um, please come grab me or come um, to the unconference. Um, I'll find the slide. Thanks. Hey, my name is Jackie. I work for the Parks Department. Um, I, my session is going to be about this big um, participatory mapping project we're going to be conducting citywide starting this May to map all of the street trees in New York City through um, mapping events in every neighborhood. I really hope to see a lot of you there. Um, but I'm going to, so my session, I'm going to talk about that mapping effort, the tools we're going to be using um, to allow volunteers to help us map street trees, but I'm interested in having a conversation with all of you about what would you like to do with the data. I'm really interested in hearing um, different ideas. Um, I, I've got some ideas and I'd just love to have a conversation around that. And um, this will be on the board soon. <laughs> So if anyone's interested in the rent stabilization stuff, it'll be hacking rent stabilization in the orange room at 5 p.m. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Hello! Hello! Beautiful. Well, I'm Claudine. I wrote a book called The Power of Social Media, Be Yourself, Change Somebody's Life Today. And then I'm here. You can tell I'm very excited. From yesterday and today, I, am, I, I may call myself a gig guy or gig girl, whatever you call me. My organization called Why Do I Exist? We work to help the survival of genocide in Rwanda. I want you guys to come to help me to build database. Because there is a many people in the world who want to make a difference in the life of the orphans in Rwanda, but they don't know how. And then also there is orphans in Rwanda. Uh, we have over a million of survivors. They need the help, but they don't know where they can get access to this help. So I invite all of you to come to help me to build this, this database. And then today it will be in history of Rwandan orphans, I swear to you. And then I, I'm telling you that anybody will come to our, my session. I don't know what time they're going to give it to me. Anytime free, I'm, 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 I'm taking that. So <laughs> anybody will come to this session you will make a huge difference, not only in my life, in the life of the survivor of genocide, especially the orphans. I'm the voice today, and then I hope all of you, you will be the voice, the voices. And then also I'm collecting uh, computers. We want to send to 100 computers. Thank you. What time? What time? What time? Four? Four? Okay, for which room? Turtle Bay. Uh, what? Turtle Bay. Okay, Turtle Bay at 4 p.m. See you there. Let's give a round of applause here to Lauren. Not only did she make the board, but then she timed the board. So, all right. How many slots do we have left? Uh, how many? What? We have five. 
available slots. Does anybody else want to pitch a project? Yeah. And that's okay if we have a few empty spots. Uh, I do want to uh, uh, go ahead and write it down first. Um, I want to tell you, uh, please be uh, careful with this board. If you have to reschedule your time, which is sometimes what happens on a non-conference, uh, we're going to try to reuse this board, but we ran out of tack, so we're using tape. And tape is a little bit more violent on the veneer of, of this particular board. So we don't want to ruin it today. If you have to move its <laughs> slot, be very, very gentle. Delicate. Like a flower. Yeah, yeah. So, so my, mine is called Get Your Data Wrangling On. Uh, it's orange because I'm a Syracuse alumni. Go orange! Um, uh, so if you've ever wondered how to get started with data, what do you, what do you, where do you get it from? What, then once you've got it, how do you get started to analyze it, reformat it, restructure it, to wrangle it? Uh, I want to talk about all the great uh, Unix command line tools that are available. Tools like uh, CSV Kit, uh, Open Refine. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, with CCAN and the CCAN API, and Beta NYC has a great new uh, data data portal that has a fabulous API. If anybody's interested in talking about that or exploring it, come see me. I don't know where I'm going to be or when, but it will be on well, this where board. Where do you want to be? I want to I want to be on that open slot. Green room. Green room at five o'clock. That, that has a projector. Three no, three o'clock. Three o'clock. That, that has a projector. Uh, yes, yes. Green room at 3 o'clock, the orange card. Uh, and for those of you who go to the green, orange, and red room, we're going to make sure that there are HDMI cables. Uh, there's only HDMI cables, so hopefully you have an adapter. If you don't have an adapter, uh, we'll bring you, an we'll try to get you an adapter. Uh, next victim. <laughs> Up to the mic. Next hey guys, uh, my name's Dan. I'm a freelance developer living in the city. I'm currently working on a web app also related to housing in the, in the city. Basically, it's a tool that helps tenants um, more easily get publicly accessible information about their building, whether it's a uh, history of code violations, whether it's you know open 311 requests, um, their rent history. Basically, it's a very ambitious sort of umbrella sort of project. I'm building it in full stack JavaScript and uh, would love to talk about it. All right, thanks. Great, we have one more person. Last but not least, um, my name is Danielle. I'm also an SU alum, like that guy over there. Woo! Um, so I heard of some people around saying they had interest in MTA data. I do too. Um, so I'm on the MTA website, they have a live data stream of, you know, there's a sick passenger over here and there's a signal problem over there. Um, but what I want to do is collect it into a database or whatever. Uh, and then map where those alerts happen. So where there's the signal problems, where there's a sick passenger, um, what times of day these maybe happen. Um, just like a really cool, I think, exploratory tool. Uh, you can kind of merge weather data with it, you know, on cold days or snowy days, there's different kind of problems. Um, maybe even take the turnstile data and see how many people are affected by different issues. Um, and I have this bright green card, it says MTA service alerts, and I'm going to put it, this is, okay. Do you need a project, well, yeah. Uh, flat iron at four. Flat iron at four. Be there. Awesome. Let's do a big cheer for that. Woo! 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 Um, so we're happy to say the water is back on, so you may uh, you may go to the restroom, but you cannot leave your seats. No, just kidding, uh, because we still have one last thing. So this board is going to live right around the corner from the blue payphone. Uh, if you're standing around the corner from the blue payphone, wave, wave at me. All oh, that team over there, all right, where those people are waving over there, keep on waving, keep on waving. That's where the board is going to be. Okay, everybody see that? Great. All right. Uh, so. This is easily now the technical portion of, of the event. So for those of you who have projects that you want to work on, that you want to pitch, that you've been thinking about, that you've been collaborating on talk.beta.nyc, uh, this is your opportunity to kind of say, what is the project that you're going to be working on? And what are, well, first of all, your name, your project, and what are the, the skills or the challenges that you're, that you're looking to, to tackle. And once again, we're going to use this lovely runway, or exit aisle, or how do we want to call this hallway? What is this thing right here? Uh, we're, huh? Runway? Okay. 
We're gonna line catwalk. Ooh, yeah. Um, we're gonna get everybody lined up here uh, to talk about the different projects that they're working on. Um, and people are gonna manifest in this row right here. Okay, so once again, you're gonna come to the microphone. We're gonna make this uh, not destroy the conference board. Um, so your name, the project kind of like title, example, uh, brief, brief overview. Uh, and then what, like, what do you need to solve this particular problem? Does that make sense? Okay, so I need like I need a front end developer, I need a back end developer, I need to do some data science, uh, I need a graphic designer, I need someone who knows X, Y, and Z, I need a someone who's an expert in this particular type of uh, data, uh, and so on, and so on. Hi, I'm Joanna Altman Smith. I'm a Safe Streets advocate, and I am very interested in motivating the DOE to take street safety around the bazillion public schools in New York seriously. Um, right now there's a lot of focus on what's happening once they close the school doors and there's not a lot of focus on how the kids get to school and what challenges they face along the way. So my idea is I need to connect with people who are good at GIS because I know the data is there, it's really accessible. I need a map kind of overlay that shows all the different public schools in New York and I want to break it down by the enrollment of those schools, whether those schools are elementary, middle, or high school. Um, and then I want to mash it up with the DOT's Vision Zero collision data that's also right out there. And I want to use it to help prioritize where the DOT should do um, safe street design interventions first. Like they have big ideas, not a lot of money. So help them focus where are the youngest kids walking in the most dangerous places? and then get people moving on it. So I think it's just a, a mapping project, is what I'm thinking. So come find me. I'm a novice. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, John Krause. I'm looking for people who have experience uh, pulling information out of uh, PDFs and HTML tables. The project is called uh, NYC Stabilization Unit Counts. I think Chris mentioned it. It's going to be a little bit non-conference, too, but we need some coders uh, to help get all this data that's locked in publicly accessible tax bills for New York City properties um, that actually says, actually gives indications as to what rent rolls is, which is really interesting in terms of um, neighborhood stabilization and changes in neighborhoods, as well as suggestions of uh, what stabilized unit counts are in those uh, buildings. So we're already running a scraper that is pulling down all these tax bills for the relevant buildings, um, and we just need people to write up a couple scripts that will pull that data out so we can put it in a table and publish it. Thanks. Hi again, Chris. Um, and on the other part of that, amirentstabilized.com is a web app I've prototyped. Um, I could really use some help with the UX, UI design. So if there's any designers, front end developers out there that want to give me a hand, and, or anyone who just wants to user test it, you don't have to be um, technically savvy at all just to like it's just really helpful to see people interact with it and see what, I, what else I can do to improve it. Um, so come find me, thanks. Are the two of you working together? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hello again, uh, this is the third time we mentioned the city record, so I hope it sticks and everybody remember what the city record is. Uh, so we're looking for people to help us yeah, unwrangle uh, the data that's in um, an unstructured database, so basically parse uh, out like addresses uh, and uh, times and things so we can actually make sense of the data so we can provide people notices about uh, when a meeting is happening uh, and where, it, where it's happening and what addresses it concerned. So uh, developers, designers, uh, natural process, natural language process experts uh, and people that are interested in basically changing the way uh, or one of the ways that government speaks uh, to, to residents and this way hasn't been changed for a long, long, long time. So uh, by structuring this data we can do a lot of interesting stuff. So we'll be working uh, throughout the day uh, in some corner. So yeah, join us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ziggy. I have two projects that I'd love some help with. One uh, is called the Bushwick Community Map, which is a set of tools to help people fight gentrification, particularly in Bushwick, but we'd love to do it in other neighborhoods. Uh, and I have another project, which is about analyzing Department of Buildings data. So if you're interested in any of those two things, talk to me. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. You guys are getting better. I'm, I'm proud of you. So I'm the people engineer, and uh, does anybody is anybody familiar with two letters called the UN? Yeah. All right, good. Most of you are. So this, in 2015, they released, a, they released a set of goals to make the world a better place called the Sustainable Development Goals. It's 17 goals with 169 measurable targets. The problem is it's all in words that very few people understand. So what I'm interested in is if anyone is interested in helping create a data visualization scheme so that we can help world leaders, local leaders, community organizers, and fellow people like us that don't have the attention span to read you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages of text in a single digestible piece of information. So if you have a passion for making the world a better place, regardless of your skills, those are the types of people that I would like to work with. Hello, everyone. Uh, so looking at New York's uh, consolidated annual financial reports, does anyone here pay taxes in New York City? <laughs> So then I'm talking to you. Uh, so just basically be opening up as a PDF parse using tabula <coughs> technology. It's pretty, if anyone here is like kind of a, uh, has a simple GUI, it's pretty easy. So people that understand municipal finance would be good. People, if we want to get have a lot of fun, we can set up like more of an extraction pipeline, but that's kind of more fancy and not necessary. I need a place to put it up on the web. Um, we call it like New York City Open Audit. Um, so basically, anyone just basically need humans to go through and read this and make sure that this makes sense. Um, and if you want to talk about that, we'll be talking at 2 p.m. in the orange room. Hello, everybody. My name is Sarah Zeller Berkman, um, and I'm at the CUNY Graduate Center, and we are trying to launch an initiative that uses the infrastructure of youth councils and mobile tech in a participatory approach to have young people be able to have a say in policy making in New York City. Um, and so we are in the formative stages. We have some good buy-in by folks in government, but I would love to have designers and developers come talk to me about this if you're interested in helping have more youth participation in New York City. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Claudine. Let me, this is me, Claudine, around, right now. Let me hear everybody say, I am free! Uh, you are talking with Claudine. I am free. I am free. Beautiful. Um, I survived the genocide in Rwanda. I am full of life. I celebrate life every single second. That's why I am free. That's why I want everybody allowing me to be free and to be happy because there is no reason to be unhappy because life we live is a gift from God. So I am working on two projects here in America. One is a women empowerment uh, with the student, a high school student in Brooklyn, which is going to happen there in March 4th. Uh, so I'm looking, for, I'm looking for any help you can get because a student there, they need help, they need money. We want to do fundraising, and then also we want to build the self-esteem inside of them uh, to have a confidence so they can, uh, uh, they, can, they can compete when they go to the market. So another program project I'm working on is to have uh, my own TV show. Claudine Media or Claudine TV online. I'm looking for a web developer. The people, dynamic people like myself, and then the people who, who have a mindset, business mindset, and marketing uh, skills, so we can uh, do a segment show and then immediately go online, because I have many ideas. I meet with many people. I get my own ideas I want to share with the world. My dream, my desire, is to help as many people as I can, so I need your help. Tough act to follow, mine is not nearly as high-minded, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm trying to take this payphone data and figure out where we should put all these new hotspots, yay. So if anyone wants to help me tackle this giant uh, Excel file of existing and former payphone locations and turn it into something uh, accessible, like a shareabouts map, uh, please come talk to me and I'd love your help. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, this is a project I'm uh, sort of not committed to yet, but it's called Civic Badges. Uh, it's basically, uh, Mozilla has this uh, uh, system called Open Badges, which is a federated badge, badging uh, API. So what if we could allow uh, city agencies to award badges for doing certain things that are not pleasant? Uh, I mean, badging is controversial. You don't wanna like uh, sort of displace intrinsic motivation with extrinsic rewards. Uh, so there's that. Uh, this is like a high level exporter project. If you wanna work with that, uh, work on that with me, uh, come and find me. Hi guys, Danielle again. Um, you might remember me from five minutes ago. Uh, 
Um, so I still have that on conference at four about MTA service alerts, um, but specifically if you know D3 or any other uh, data viz programming type language, if you know how to uh, scrape data, extract data, you're just a, a dev person, um, that would be super awesome. I have a data viz background, but if you also have a data viz background and you think this is interesting, it would be awesome to hang out with you. Hi everyone, my name is Guilherme de Almeida. I'm a public policy student at Columbia University and together with some friends we have created a website called Open Government Toolkit, opengtk.org, which goal is to provide tutorials for governments who want to open data and for people who want to use public data and also a repository of good uh, success stories on public data used for different purposes and also a Stack Overflow like uh, in, interface and in, interaction platform for people who want to uh, use data and have problems on that. So I'm looking for people to test the platform, to share their stories and share their, their case successes and I'll be around and I hope to have your collaboration. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Simon. Um, I had an idea for an interactive app essentially aimed at uh, tourists um, because uh, everybody comes here uh, not knowing where to find a bathroom. And we all know how uh, New York stinks in, uh, in late August. Um, so I have an I the, the idea of how to, how to get it off, um, but I, I really don't know how to build an app. So I'm looking for somebody who can aid me in, in making something interactive that's easily accessible, maybe can download to the iPhone or whatever. That's basically it. So come and find me if you have any ideas. Ooh. Hi everyone, my name is Matt. Um, I have a simple question. How many people would stop like to paying for your subway with this and start paying with this? Show of hands. Some? Oh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, we've got a way to do that. We're looking for a back end developer to help reconcile data from the turnstile side and the phone side uh, to help prevent and catch fraud uh, for the MTA. So if you're interested, come find me. Thanks. Hi, I'm Micha Sifri, co founder here at Civic Hall. Um, and two things. One, all of you with these great projects. Uh, if you think Civic Hall can help you in some way, come give me your business card, I'll give you mine, we'll email, we'll talk. Uh, second, we are looking to hire a tech director. And if you think you could be that person, one part mother hen for this community, these kinds of projects, one part operations, one part visionary, also, come talk to me, give me your card. Hey everyone, me again. My name's Feige again. Um, I'm still having my end conference on the homeless in the green room, I believe, at five. But I. Um, so uh, I'm still going to work on my app for the homeless. I just was joined by a guy named Michael, who's also an iOS developer. But what I need is a designer and anyone who has any sort of strategy for the app. Um, thank you. Great. Hi, my name is Ben Typen, and my partners and I use uh, data and software to go into dysfunctional parts of the real estate market and make them work more efficiently. And in New York, the most dysfunctional part of the real estate market is affordable housing. So if you're interested in using data and software to create more affordable housing in New York, uh, and you, you know natural language processing or machine learning or uh, OCR, please come find me um, either today or tomorrow, or I will be working in Civic Hall, um, so please feel free. Thanks. Hey guys, um, I was just up here a few minutes ago. My name's Dan. Um, I think I was talking really quickly, so I don't completely remember what I said. But um, I'm working on this on this web app. It's I think it's really cool because it's not just supposed to be a, a analytics tool. It's supposed to be for people who aren't necessarily as tech savvy as ourselves. Um, I'm working with a couple of tenant advocacy organizations in the city. Um, in order to really build something that people can really easily access and um, get information from. And so if you are someone who's uh, not just a usability expert, but really knows how to create meaningful tools that 
people can actually um, engage with. I'd be really interested in hearing your expertise. Um, I'm going to be in the red room in like 10 minutes. Thanks. Can, uh, I'm going to jump in real quickly. <clears throat> Those of you who uh, had a lucky golden ticket to attend the Open Data Workshop, uh, we're going to ask you to, if you can start going over to the boardroom. Remember, those are the people who have been getting emails from uh, Haley and where did you go? Nathan? Where are they? Uh, they're, they're all in the boardroom, but if you got one of those golden tickets, please go there now so that way you can have the appropriate time period. Sorry for interrupting, but those people who need, you're going to kick off at right at uh, uh, 1 o'clock. And we need to get these projects wrapped up so that way everybody else can go to their own conference sessions. Yep. So, okay, Sorry. great. I'll, I'll keep this uh, short and sweet. A little bit more info about uh, what I'd like to talk about at 3 o'clock um, in City Open Data, which is a global news project and policy aggregator. So we can look at city websites, we can look at uh, news organizations, and if when the great people of New York City want to think about open data and how it's being leveraged uh, globally, uh, they are in a position to know what other cities are doing. Um, what other projects are out there, a little bit of information on it, and, and we can get that all in a place which uh, doesn't doesn't quite exist right now. So it's three o'clock at from in Flatiron. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alabid. Uh, I'm working with Linda right there on uh, Android app. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, make it easier for constituents to participate in making decisions about bills. And the way we were thinking about doing it, that we have an app that. Uh, uh, the user can filter the, exist the existing bills being discussed and record a uh, one minute video. Um, that video will be automatically tweeted at the representative corresponding to them. Um, so we're looking for uh, web uh, for uh, Android developers. Uh, reach out to us. Thanks. Hi, Joanna again. I just have a down and dirty little project to throw out. DOT has a data set that's publicly available for real time speeding. <laughs> But when you open it, it is hideous. It's really raw. So if anyone could quickly make a humanoid interface for that, it would be really valuable for advocates. Thanks. Cool. This is super convenient because I'm the last one, and my session begins in five minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I just want to bring up this topic of um, so a lot of journalists really look at open data and want to tell good stories, um, but a lot of them found it technically challenging to actually dig into it. So right now they're relying on a lot of existing tools to tell the story, like Timeline JS or stuff that other people have built for them, or they use Cardo DB to do a very simple visualization. So I would just like to brainstorm with whoever is interested about how you could empower these journalists to tell very in-depth story while they don't have the necessarily knowledge to code anything raw. How do you facilitate that process? Is it like a stack of little tools? Is it like support from developers from time to time in a certain community way? So we'll, we can talk about this in my farmer's market trip. Um, so yeah, come find me. I'm Jue, by the way, uh, again, um, working for CUNY Journalism School. Hello everyone, my project is uh, keeping the project list for all the cool projects that you guys are working on. <laughs> so if you go to projects.beta.nyc, there's a little blurb at the top about how you can get your project on our project page and all the information about how to make a civic JSON to make sure that it gets the publicity that it deserves. So I'll be over here in this corner all day if you need help getting it on your project page. And good luck and have fun. Woo! Thank you, thank you. So I'm actually coming back from the back of the room, back of the room. So uh, this, we're going to get started. The sessions are going to start uh, at 1 o'clock, which is prompt. Um, the time is in military time, so just be careful about that. Just subtract 12. That's a test of your geek knowledge. Um, the other thing that I want to say is data should go on data.beta.nyc. Uh, you can continue conversations on talk.beta.nyc. Uh, Gunner, wherever you are, thanks for reminding me. Uh, just about all of you, if not all of you, should have invites to our Slack channel, uh, which is uh, Slack is the kind of the way that the new kids are doing real-time communication. Back in the day, we used to have IRC, but people found that too, too complicated. So now they have a really complicated way to join, but then once you join, it's like regular IM. So there's a Slack channel, betanyc.slack.com. You can find, I think I've opted Lucio, myself, Ben, if he's around, 
uh, and I can opt some of, I think maybe Vulcans also. So come find one of the people with the blue buttons, one of the geekier ones, and we'll opt you in to, to beta.nyc.slack.com. Beta Data.beta.nyc, put your data if you're scraping it, talk, uh, and then by the end of the day, projects dot beta dot nyc is where all of your projects go. We've got a fun number of prizes, uh, actually certificates of awesomeness uh, that we're going to award tomorrow. Uh, so the next big interruption that y'all are going to have is at 5.30 when Gail Brewer comes to give her stirring end of the day keynote. So uh, have fun. Treat everybody with the utmost respect. Uh, party on Wayne. Party on Wayne. Party on Garth. All right. Uh, enjoy. Go to your first sessions and work on your projects.